G'day, Ben Kingsley here, the co-host of the Property Couch podcast, and I am thrilled to be able to announce a great new enhancement to our My Wealth portal, the free money management platform that incorporates our Money Smart system. And we have got this brand new piece of innovation, and we've been beta testing this for a few months now, and we're going to release it out to all users. And it's called MoneyFit, and the idea behind it is around comparing your circumstances to those in the network. So it's a survey of what you have coming in and money going out. So I wanted to jump in to a demonstration piece. So let's do that now. So here we are, uh, we've logged in, uh, we've used our two-factor authentication, and again, you can keep yourself anonymous, um, and we're on the dashboard here. Now you can see down on the menu bar here, we've got money fit. I click over to that, and this is the new area that's been part of the Money Smart system. So what's happening here is you can see some numbers coming through. So for Brett and Sally, um, they're aged between 26 and 30 from Victoria. So we're gonna look firstly, green is money coming in. So we've got their age range and we're gonna compare them across Australia. Now what's happening here in this histogram is we can see that their range is 73 to $98,000. There are, based on the surveyed households here of 5,238, um, they sit at around 42.2%. So that's just giving them an indication across Australia where their income sits compared to everybody else. Now remember, creating wealth isn't always about income. It's also about expenditure. Now I can compare them against all age groups. So we can have a look here and you can see what's going on. So where do they sit against all age groups? 47.9, and you can see the number of households above and below that area. And then of course, I can even compare them across different states. Now, this is you comparing yourself, remember? Now, when we come down into expenses, we're looking at total expenditure into the household. So again, I'm going to start with their age range because I think it's only fair to look at age range brackets to get a fair comparison of your situation. And now you can also see from an expenditure point of view, uh, in terms of their age range, their total expenditure across the household is actually only 12.9%. So that's very, very good. So there's 2,892 households that are above them, but only 535 households below. Now you've got to be happy with that if you're in that bottom 25% quartile because from an expenditure point of view, that's where you want to be. And of course, you know, from an income point of view, you'd love to be high, but really the most important thing is how you're trapping your surplus. So we go down in, and this is where I'm really excited. This bit here for me is where we think we're going to help with changing behavior. So, you know, again, coming back to the thousands and thousands of consultations that I've had, it's one of the big questions that I get asked all the time. How do we compare uh, for people who spend on their kids? How do we compare to spending on household? How do we compare to spending on groceries, electricity, it, it, you know, entertainment, uh, hobbies, et cetera, et cetera? So this is where you can do that. So I'm gonna start off by going to all ages. So I'm doing a national search here and I'm going to select my expense item. So to start with, I'm gonna do groceries and you can see here with the groceries, this is where I can compare. Now, what this is telling me is that I'm 91.8% of the household, so I spend a lot on groceries, um, is the message for this particular couple here. So we'd like to see that come down. So what are you spending on that's essential versus discretionary, even though it's in the grocery side? So there can be no arguments. Now, if we go down into people of their age group, what does that look like for them? Does their situation improve? And we can see there we hover over again and they, and they have improved a little bit. So there are older households potentially that are spending more than they are, but they're still very, very high in that expense range. Let's try one more. Let's go and have a look at uh, electricity in terms of how they compare from an ele electricity point of view. So now we're seeing here 61. I'd prefer them to be sub 50. So you know maybe they're spending too much on electricity. Maybe the, the deal that they've got with their electricity provider is a little too high and they need to shop around. So again, just bringing it back to context in terms of what their overall situation is. And again, you can go into Victoria because remember, some electricity costs in some cities are more than others. So when we go into the state, we can also see that it's at 69.3. 
based on their age range as well. So really, there's no excuse for them not to start looking at how much they're spending on electricity to trap more surplus. Because the more surplus we trap, the more we can put that money to work for us. So let's now look at the gold section, which is really about our trapping surplus and then building wealth. And we can see here in terms of their surplus, looks pretty good at 37,000. So they might be spending a lot on electricity and a little bit more on groceries, but maybe they don't have as much expenditure on discretionary items like holidays or, or things like um, you know uh, hobbies and, and uh, taking away food or what have you. So that's why you don't just look at a couple and say, right, that's in an isolation. You need to do play around here, get familiar with the insights that you're learning here. You can see for this particular case, this household sits right in the middle at 50.9%. So there's 1,828 households above and 2,155 households below. So that's based on a survey of 4,231. Now, as more people come on to the MyWealth portal and check out their money fit story, um, that number is going to grow. But also remember that we're only getting the aggregate data. There is no personal information that makes its way into this here, okay? So your privacy is protected and we're only looking at the state level. One day in the future, as we get tens of thousands of people using the platform, we might go down into city level. We can have a look at you know the Sydney area or the Melbourne area and have a look at the capital cities and see what the spending that's going on. So that's really good. And then ultimately the final story here is really your net worth uh, and what's gonna be happening in regards to where you sit currently compared to your particular age group or right across Australia for all of the age groups. So you can then also start to get a sense of, of where you're at in terms of your wealth creation journey. Now we've got some further enhancements to do. Um, we, as I said, we were beta testing this, kicking the tires on, but I'm delighted to say it's now live and available and there will be more features that we'll be adding over the course of the next 12 months. So that's an exciting thing. I hope you can compare yourself, uh, you know, scratch that itch of curiosity around your circumstances. You know, have a little bit of a play in terms of your money matching. How do you compare? That's really a big part of what Money Fit is all about. So get in there, kick the tires on it. How you do that is really simple. You go into the expenses area, you fill in the details and your bills and spending, and you also your income, which comes into your income story. That's all we need to play with Money Fit. Um, if you haven't already got a copy of our Money Smarts book, which is really the transformational journey we want around money management, uh, don't forget you can get a free copy of that book in PDF format. It can be emailed straight to you by going to makemoneysimpleagain.com.au. For now, that's it, but there will be future enhancements, so I look forward to chatting with you real soon.